Hey everyone, and welcome to the Rhinebeck edition of Wool Booty. I think this is my fifth Wool Booty video. So for those of you who are new subscribers or new viewers, um, I normally have a knitting podcast, but I put all of my purchases and gifts and all that kind of stuff in separate videos because um, I just don't really have time to show it off on the podcast. So I am here to show you all of the things that I picked up at Rhinebeck or were given to me as gifts. So I've got yarn and I've got some bags and just a couple other little things. So I know it has been quite a while since my last podcast episode. I think it's been two months about, more than two months. I think my last one is actually August 31st and it's now November. So I do apologize for just kind of disappearing, but I have just had a lot going on. I haven't had time, and on top of that, I just wasn't feeling up to it. That's <laughs> pretty much all I can say. I had a lot to deal with and um, was not feeling particularly inspired. And so my making took a huge hit, and yeah, I just didn't have much to share, and I also didn't have time to share it. So I am back. Um, a lot has happened in the past couple months and um, so my next podcast episode will have lots of projects and a couple finished objects and um, it should be good so <laughs> keep an eye out for that soon. After this week I will have a bunch of time opening up so um, yeah, I'll have a lot more to share then. So until then, I hope you enjoy this. I will be talking a little bit about um, just my Rhinebeck experience as I go through the stuff that I bought. And if you want to catch a um, recap of the Rhinebeck weekend, I, I filmed a live video with Emily from Slow Fashion Rebel right after, or like at the end of the weekend. So. Um, I will put a link to her channel and that video in the description for this video if you want to see that we talked about. We kind of just went through the whole weekend of everything we did and I showed a couple of things that I bought. But today I'm going to show all the stuff I got except for the things I've already given away as gifts. I have limited time on my memory card today, so I'm going to try to blast through this. Okay, so let's get started. The first event of Rhinebeck weekend that I went to was Indian Tangled. I did not go to Needles Up. Um, my sister Allison and I decided to volunteer at Indian Tangled, so we just didn't have the time to go to Needles Up, but we wanted to um, spend as much time as possible at Indian Tangled so that we could see as many people as possible and not feel like we were going to be rushed to shop because you only had two hours. If you got a ticket, you got two hours to shop. Um, it was much less crazy than last year. They had a better venue, there was more space, and I think that since they did these shopping shifts, there was less of a big rush of everybody all at once trying to get to the things they wanted to get to. So um, it was more organized, it was more relaxed, and there was like more of a flow, and it was much more enjoyable. And I don't know if that was partly because less people came this year because of the situation last year, but I don't know. Okay, so uh, first thing I got, actually, Right before Indian Tangled, the day before my sister and I drove to Rhinebeck, we went to Dances with Wool, which is a shop in Richmond, Virginia. That's where Allison lives. Um, and so we went to their shop, and they were having an anniversary thing, like the week um, of Rhinebeck. And so they were offering little um, surprise discounts and stuff on things um, celebrate their anniversary. So I picked up these knit blocker pins. These are by Knitter's Pride. I actually haven't even opened them yet. Um, I just pulled them out of my suitcase because I still haven't unpacked completely. Okay, so these are like little blocks um, that have the pins in a straight line so that 
Um, you can get a perfectly straight edge a little bit easier when you pin things. So I'm really looking forward to using these. I've only ever used like T pins when blocking or I just lay stuff flat. So I've never bought blocking tools. So I kind of feel like a grown up knitter now. Okay, so that was what I bought at the yarn shop before I went to Rhinebeck and um, okay, so Indian Tangled, first thing I got as a volunteer, we were all given these adorable bags. I love the illustration on this bag so much. Like, look at this alpaca. She's showing off her shawl. She's so cute. Her friends love it. And they're, they're taking selfies of their sweaters. Like, it's just, this is what Rhinebeck is. Like, everybody's so happy to be wearing their knit stuff and everybody's happy to see your knit stuff and talk about it. Yeah, this is really embarrassing, but the last night, like before I flew back to Germany, I was packing and I like sat for a minute and I just looked at this. And the little happy sweater wearing animals made me tear up because it just like made me think about how sweet everybody is at Rhinebeck and like how much fun it is and like it's such a positive, amazing community. Like you don't even have to know somebody and you can instantly be best friends because you're wearing the same sweater. It's, I don't know, it's just, it's cool. Um, yeah. Anyway, I love this bag a lot. It's a good size too. A lot of these canvas tote bags are like really huge and this is only like kind of huge. So it's a good size, I think, um, for like a big sweater project. So I'll definitely be using it. Okay, so the first thing I got at Indian Tangled, I actually don't have with me um, because I gave it away as a gift, but I bought two little hanks of yarn from the Wooliers as gifts for my cat sitters who watched my cat while I was away. I got them hanks of the Erin weight yarn but I got some fingering weight for myself. So I got these two colors and I bought a sweaters quantity so that I can do um, the Catskills cabin pullover sweater which Margot from the Wooliers was wearing. Um, at India Untangled and I thought it was so cute and I really wanted to make one and this yarn feels amazing and it smells really good too. <laughs> um, so if you don't know about the Wooliers, I highly recommend watching Christy Glass's interview with them. They have cruelty free yarn so you know you're like supporting something really good when you buy from them. So keep an eye out. I am thinking of doing a knit along with the Wooliers yarn and or patterns in the future. So if you're interested in their yarn or patterns, just keep an eye out um, the next couple months because hopefully I'll get something going with that. Um, yeah, so sweaters quantity of this. I bought a ridiculous amount of yarn and I almost always want to buy sweaters quantities, so just warning you. Um, the next Thing I bought was from the Farmer's Daughter Fibers. Caitlin Hunter was there and it was so awesome to meet her. She is so sweet and kind and um, it was just really great to see her in person and wearing her Ramblin' Woman cardigan. That cardigan is incredible and I wasn't really sure about it just seeing the pictures online or on Instagram. Um, because of the flare shape, I think. I just figured it, it wasn't gonna be for me, but then seeing it in person and how it moved and stuff, I think I really want one. So um, I didn't get yarn for that, but I did buy yarn for a Tecumseh from the Farmer's Daughter. So this is what I got as my main color. And I don't know if you can tell, I it's nighttime here and so I have my big, big box lights on so the colors might be a little washed. But this colorway is Elk Antler and it's kind of a really light taupe or beige with um, kind of a pinkish tint to it. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. But it's really pretty and the other 
colors I got. I got North Wind for the shields. It's kind of a steely bluish gray. And then for the crosses, I got this um, kind of burnt orange color. This is called Eagle Eye. So this is going to be my Tecumseh. Uh, this kind of came out of left field. I always wanted to make the Tecumseh, but I just, I don't know. I didn't want to, I didn't really have yarn for it sitting around, and I didn't know what kind of yarn I wanted to use. I couldn't even choose colors. But I don't know, just being there, and like, Caitlin Hunter was there, and I loved this yarn. It's a two-ply DK weight, and this is not the base that they used for the sample. Um, but it is a DK by the same dyer. It'll still work, so I'm really excited about that. Um, and I came home and I was gonna use the coupon code that Caitlin had for patterns um, for the rest of the month of October, and it turns out that I had already bought the Tecumseh pattern like in a previous sale that she had, so I was really glad that I already had the pattern for that. Okay, so the day of Rhinebeck, I made a beeline to this one vendor that I got some Cormo at last year. I've showed it before and I had yet to use it. Um, it's from Ensign Brook Farm and uh, Karen Kennedy, yeah. So I think that's the name of the woman who spins the yarn, but, um, or like owns the sheep. I don't really, I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> But she was there. Um, so anyway, I bought three of these last year at Rhinebeck, and I got the last three in this color. And I couldn't figure out something to knit with only three of them, so they've just been sitting in my stash. And so this year I thought I'd see if they had more, and I would get enough so that I could make a whole sweater out of it. So I got three more because I was not gonna be left <laughs> without enough. I think I probably only needed one or two to make a good sweater, but I just wanted to be safe. So it was the first yarn that I bought at New York Sheep and Wool. I got three of these. And yeah, I'm really happy with it. So I'm not totally sure. I've got some ideas, but I don't know for sure what I'm gonna do. Um, I ran across a Hello Mello hand spun. Um, a few hours later and so she has a hand dyed Cormo which is not very common I think a lot of people who want to knit with Cormo are really like really into natural colors because they're into like breeds and they're like really more like sheepy people instead of like hand dyed people <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense but yeah so you just don't see a whole lot of hand dyed Cormo but she had some, and I thought that these two would look amazing together. So I got one skein of this hot pink to go with this potentially as like um, maybe a color work yoke, or I was thinking the Radiate by Hohi Locatelli, but I'm not totally sure. I just know these are gonna go together probably. <laughs> I have to get on Ravelry and check things out. Okay, so the place where I got the first skein of Cormo was really close to the vendor who has um, these hand-woven baskets. And I had to get a basket because I wanted one last year and I didn't get one because I kept thinking how the heck am I supposed to get that home uh, on the flight because I had too many bags already, but this time I didn't uh, I packed really light and so I was able to bring this on the plane as a carry-on and it was totally full of yarn and it fit in the overhead bin so it did good but yeah I got that one I love the colors of it I kind of wanted the big open one but that actually ended up being a really good shape for the plane um, because stuff didn't fall out of it as easily okay next Sorry, I'm trying to blast through this because my memory card, my big one is lost and so I'm using one that has a lot less memory on it and so I don't have as many minutes this time. Okay, um, oh yeah, also 
Emily is amazing and generous and so thoughtful and she got these bags for me and my sister. Um, and there's like a little Sharpie. I don't know where the Sharpie is. I think I took the Sharpie off, but it had a mini Sharpie attached to it so I could go around Rhinebeck and have everyone sign my bag. I did pretty good. I got a lot of signatures, a lot more signatures than I did photos. If you're a person who took a picture with me, please send it to me or tag me in it or something so I can see because I was really bad at taking photos this year. Um, but yeah, thank you everyone who signed my bag. I love it. This is like the greatest and it fits all my yarn in it. It's huge. Um, okay, so what else have I got here? Uh, I got the Harrisville Designs Nightshades yarn. This was very popular this year. Everybody was walking around with their like nightshades bags. Um, the label looks crappy because I squished it into my suitcase. So sorry about that. I got the colorway Streetlight. So it's a black wool base. Like it's naturally black. And then they have marbled in it this yellow. I hope you can get an idea of what it looks like. It's really, really hard to show on camera or in photos, um, but it's amazing. And this is also Cormo. This was like year of the Cormo. I'm really into Cormo these days. Haven't knit a whole lot of it, but I certainly am buying a lot of it. So I'm really excited to break into some of this yarn. This was one of the last things I got. And um, if it had been one of the first things I'd seen, I probably would have bought a sweaters quantity but by the time I got there, I had like I blew through my budget like at Indian Tangled. So it was like <laughs> I just like couldn't buy another sweaters quantity. That would have been ridiculous and I would have had to like mail things back to myself. Yeah. So I just got the one skein. I'm gonna knit a hat or something out of it, and then I don't know. If I like it enough, then I'll get a sweaters quantity in a few months or something or next year. Okay, another thing I was super, super excited about was Utopia Bath, and they make these soaps, and they are like covered in wool, so as you use it, it's kind of like a wool loofah, and the wool is naturally antibacterial, I guess, and so you can keep using the wool spongy thing like after the soap is all gone, but I got a couple of these last year, and I was super, super excited to get more this year. Um, yeah, so I got a ton of these. They smell so good. And the scent is like, it's not too pungent, but then it still hangs out. Like after you get out of the shower, you can still smell it, which is what I, which is my big complaint about most soaps is that like they smell good when you use them, but then when you get out of the shower, you don't smell them anymore, which makes me sad. But those you do. Okay, um, other things. I bumped into Amy from Stranded and she was super kind and gave me this skein of yarn. And this is, I don't know, I guess, oh, it says paint box one of a kind. So I guess it's not a regular colorway, but I love it. It's like, super ripe banana yellow and it's the best. I love yellow, obviously. So thank you so much, Amy. I am really excited. I think the only yarn from Amy that I have is a sock blank and um, it's just not the same. So I'm really excited to have like a proper skein of yarn from her. Okay, um, other gifts. I got some minis from Tristan of Dragon Horde Yarn. She gave me a couple of these. This is, okay, the colorway's not on there. And she told me, I think it's like something mermaid. It's uh, it's like frothy mermaid or like, I don't know, like something, something cute like that. Um, and then I, her mom, Christy, Gave me a couple skeins too of these little minis. So um, I don't know. I think I want to use these. I have a couple more, so I think I'm gonna put them in like a stripey shawl or something. 
Um, I have a ton of minis that have been building up, but I'm just in waiting for the right colors to kind of come together so they can all be something. Um, so now I feel like I finally have enough. Saturday night of Rhinebeck weekend, Jill Draper Makes Stuff has an open house, and last year, if you guys have watched, you know that I bought a yarn baby, which is her empire yarn. It comes in 770 gram skeins. <laughs> it's just a giant hank of yarn that is a, the approximate size of a baby. So I got one last year and um, I was like furiously knitting on my yarn baby from last year. Hopefully gonna try to make it so that I could wear that to the open house this year and I just didn't make it. I just didn't have the time, um, but it's okay. I'm almost done. I will show you on the next podcast episode. So I bought another yarn baby, but I was mostly like <laughs> furiously trying to knit it up because I couldn't justify buying another yarn baby if I hadn't knit from the first one yet because it has been sitting there all year and I was kind of just afraid to break into it because it was like kind of precious to me and I wanted to find the perfect pattern and sometimes there is no perfect pattern you just have to pick something and that's fine so I did um, but I'm glad I did because now I'm like not afraid to break into this one this is the color I chose it is awesome I think it's kind of turning up more red on camera um, it's a little more orange in real life, so it's kind of a rust color and I kind of want to knit the Chrysocolla from Pom Pom. I don't remember which issue, but it was from last year, but it has like cables and baubles all over it and if you saw any photos of my sister um, or saw us at Rhinebeck, she was wearing that one of the days. Um, which she knit out of the same yarn from the yarn baby that she got last year. So I don't know, I just thought it was really cute and I tried hers on and I really want one now. So I think I'm, this, that's what this is gonna be. I think that's it yarn wise. It feels like a lot less than it did the day of. Like I felt like I was kind of going nuts with how much stuff I bought. Um, yeah, isn't that weird? It feels, I don't know, when I'm just blasting through talking about it, to a camera, it feels like a lot less. <laughs> um, but the last thing, and this is not exactly New York Sheep and Wool related, but Emily from Slow Fashion Rebel was kind enough to let me stay at her place before my flight in New York City. Um, and she actually lives in the neighborhood I used to live in, in Brooklyn several years ago. So it was just nice to be there and nice to get a couple more days with my friend without all the craziness. Um, and she was really, really sweet and gifted me this fabric, which is like the best color, obviously. Um, I think it's wool. I don't remember. Emily, you gotta tell me what this is. I think it's wool, but um, it's just a really beautiful color and I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna make with it but it was just really thoughtful because I just started sewing and I have like no fabric stash. So I'm really excited to add this to my stash. Okay, so that is actually about all my memory card can handle for today. So I'm going to have to run, but it is a good thing I decided to do this wool booty instead of a podcast episode because I couldn't find my memory card. So I will do a podcast episode as soon as I find that, um, but I've got some time at the end of this week. Hopefully I can do it then. Um, if not, I'm just gonna buy a new memory card on Amazon. Hopefully it'll be here quickly. Um, so anyway, a huge thank you to everybody who made Rhinebeck so amazing this year, um, especially Emily and my sister Allison and my friend Melissa who's Skananigans. It was so awesome to spend time with you guys and um, everybody who came up and said hi. Thank you so much. It like really meant a lot to me that you wanted to say hi because I want to meet you guys. So um, yeah, it was super fun and I really hope I can go every year. Thanks for watching you guys. Thanks for stopping by. I'm sorry this was super rushed. 
But hopefully the next podcast episode, I'll get a little more in depth about my projects um, that I'm planning to do with all this yarn and um, if I think of anything that I left out, which I'm sure was probably a ton of stuff, I'll be sure to mention it next time. So until then, I'll see you guys. I'm just hopping on my phone because as I was trying to say goodbye on my podcast, the memory card was full and my camera just shut off. So this is just me saying goodbye and thanks for watching and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.